Stepney gets lost. Stepney, the global engine, was visiting the island of Sodor again. He had to help out with the extra passenger and freight services on both the Little Western and Thomas's branch line. He was then finished with his work that evening and went to the shed at Vickerstown and met up with Wilbert, Bear, Ginty, and the same engine which was visiting the island many years ago who was arguing with Gordon and Duck about the stations in London. Evening, gentlemen, said Stepney. Good evening, said Wilbert. Bear then started to notice Stepney. Are you that engine who was preserved him first came to the island all those years ago? He asked. Yes, I am, said Stepney. Stepney then spoke to Wilbur. Are you visiting too? He asked. Yes, I am, said Wilbur. Stepney then saw a Jinty in the same engine who was visiting the island all those years ago. What are you two doing here? asked Stepney. Oh, I became the station pilot at Vickerstown, said Jinty. Since there wasn't a shunting and gin at the shunting yard, said Vickerstown, Sir Tubham had it purchased me, and now I became the station pilot. The green engine then spoke up. You can just call me Patriot, he said, trying not to be rude. And since the railway can find a place for me, Sir Tupperman has purchased me, and now I work on the main line. I see, said Stepney. Bear then spoke. I was once told from some engines that you were safe from scrap by Sir Topham Hat. After some encounters with two ironworks diesels named Mary and Bert, right? Yes, said Stepney. You mind if I could tell you all the story? Of course, said the four engines. And Stepney began to tell his story. Stepney was enjoying himself visiting the island of Soto again. On his last day, Sir Problem Hat came to see him. I would like you to help make you listen to Toby at the quarry for today. Yes, sir, said Stepney. Shall I be away that long? Only for today, said Sir Topham Hat. Stepney felt excited and made his way to the quarry. Stepney soon arrived at the quarry and met up with Toby and Mavis. Toby was pleased to see him. We're glad you've come to help, said Toby. I'm happy to help said Stepney. He then looked at the cars. Are those our cars we're supposed to shunt? he asked. Only some of them, Mavis said. Their mess is usually more in the sightings. I see, said Stepney. But anyways, the more the merrier. Let's get to work, shall we? The two engines agreed. Stepney, Toby, and Mavis worked hard at the quarry all day. And despite that how dusty Stepney was, he worked hard. As soon as the work was done, Stepney took a rest, and the quarry manager spoke to his driver and fireman. We've got a delivery to take to a building site on a new line. 
Do you want to pull the train? I don't see why not, said the driver. Same here, said the fireman. But they should have asked Sir Topham Hat first. Stepney's train was soon ready. Come back again soon, said Toby. Oh, I will, and thank you for a lovely day. I hope I can come back again and help. Be careful on the line, said Mavis. They're supposed to be missed. Thank you for the warning, said Stepney. With that, he steamed off with his cars. Stepney had arrived at the station just in time. He then shepherded his cars into a siding and then set it off back to the Blue Bell Railway. No wonder it made this is right. Wait, no, no. Wow, said Stephanie. Maybe this is right. It really is misty. But from what Stepney didn't realize was that the switch was going in the wrong direction. And it was all because of a sleepy signalman. Stepney didn't notice and he steamed along. Home here we come, he said. Stepney then approached an unknown area. He was confused. He then heard some unknown noises. Where am I? And what are those strange sounds? He wondered. It's best we wait here until the fog clears, said the driver. Then the fog suddenly slowly lifted. Stepney didn't realize where he was. Oh no, I'm at a scrapyard, he said. His driver and fireman then went for help. Stepney was alone. Then he heard the hum of two diesels coming right towards him. One of them rolled quietly up to Stepney. Well, well, well. He said, look at what we have here. Step near the Blue Bell engine from the Blue Bell Railway. It looks like we've got you in the right place. You will make very fine scrap indeed. Buffer him up, Bert. Right away, Ari. Said Bert. The diesels took them to the large smelter shed. The two diesels then arrived inside. Stepney looked up and saw that above him was a huge claw. This engine's not for scrapping, cried Stepney. We'll see about that. Bye bye, Stepney, laughed Airy. And with that, the two diesels steamed out of the ironworks. But just as the doors were about to open, the diesels felt something behind them. Hold it right there, said a familiar voice. Harry and Bert then realized that they've been found out. What do you think you two are doing to Stepney? Axe Sir Topham Hat. It was just a trick, said Harry. 
Well, I don't think so. Thunders the top of my head. You two shall stay in your sheds until you are wanted. The diesel then rolled sadly away, and Duck had to go collect Stepney. Don't worry, you're safe, said Duck, and he pulled Stepney out of the smoke shed. Then spoke kindly to him. It's a good thing your driver and fireman called me. And it's a good thing me and Duck found you. And we must not let this happen again. Now we. Now would we? Yes, sir, said Stepney. Although I have learned something. And what's that? Axe or top of hat. There's no place like home. And that is exactly where you're going now. Blue bells forever, said Stepney as he escaped back to the mainland. When Stepney arrived back at the Blue Bell Railway, the engines were glad to see him again. Some had many questions. What happened while you were on Sodor? asked Crom Ford. Oh, I just had a little encounter with two diesels named Ari and Bert who nearly scrapped me, said Stepney. The engines were in shock. They've luckily been dealt with by Sir Topham Hat, and now. They have been stuck in the shed for the rest of the day until they were wanted. Well, that's good to hear, said Birch Grove. And with that, all the engines went fast asleep. Huh, said Patriot. Thank goodness those two troublemakers got a good lesson to it. I agree, said Genty. No one on this railway should scrap an engine from an, on the mainland who's famous. True that, said Wolper. And after that, the five engines were so tired and happy that they fell asleep at once.